Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you all here today. We're glad uh, that, glad that you came out. Glad that you're uh, on the live stream joining us. Uh, we've come to worship our great God, our Creator, our Savior today, and uh, I wanted to just share with you just uh, real briefly as we as we get started. Um, I don't know. Over the last like five six years, I've started this thing every at the start of every year of coming up with one word, kind of a word for the year that I've been praying about. And so um, the word that uh, has that the Lord has brought to my mind and that I've been holding on to uh, even these past three uh, weeks of January um, is, is trust, trust. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really been a word that I've been really hanging on to, I've been really focusing. And, you know, there's a lot of things that we can put our trust in. Um, a lot of times we'll put our trust in ourselves, we'll put our, our trust in our financial situation, we'll, we'll put our trust in things that we can control. But we're reminded that um, we are to trust in God alone, not in ourselves, because we're going we're gonna to fail, we're going we're gonna to drop the ball. You know, finances, job situation, all those things, they come and they go. But there's one steady thing, and that is, that is Jesus, that is our Lord. And that is who we've come to worship today. And so uh, wherever we're at uh, this morning as we come in, as we start this new, this new uh, week, um, I, I want to ask the question, where, where are you putting your trust? And I want to invite you today to put your trust in the Lord, to focus your attention on Him. Uh, the call to worship that I'm going to read is out of uh, Psalm 62. And in there, there's, um, there's a phrase, and it says, trust in him at all times. And so that's the invitation wherever we find ourselves. Let's, let's trust the Lord with, with the future of our church. Let's trust in him. With the future of our lives, let's, let's trust in him. With, with our finances, with our struggles, let's keep our eyes focused on Jesus. And so that is what we are here uh, together to join in. So uh, I invite you to stand with me. And we are going to, I'm going to get us started with Psalm 62 this morning. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Amen? Amen. Let's worship the Lord. All right. Let's lift our voices this morning. I want to hear everyone out there.
public service announcement to make. Oh, please do. This song coming up, I tell you, I want to hear some amen. Not in the script, not in the verses, but I want to hear some amens because guess what? The Lord is with us. Yes, I do feel a spirit here this morning, and it's so good to have you all here in the house of the Lord. Invite people to come. Invite people to come to the church next week. Tonight, there's going to be a special service tonight for our city. We want people to come. We want people to know the Lord that don't know him. And those that do, we just want to grow closer to him. We just want to know him better, don't we? So let's just continue our worship this morning.
you've given us. We thank you that we can come here and we can lift our voices and we can praise you, God. There is not enough praise in us that we can give you that you deserve, Lord. But we are here and we are open to your message this morning and we ask, God, that you just fill our hearts and that we walk away changed this morning, God. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. You all may be seated. Lord is good and he's in this place. He's seeking your heart. He wants to know you. He wants you to know him. I let's let's continue in our in our worship. Let's continue in our prayer to him. Would you join me in praying? Heavenly Father, God, you are so faithful. Lord, we we acknowledge our great need for you. We acknowledge that we trust in you today, God. No matter what it is that we are facing, no matter what giants are calling our names, no matter what mountain that stands in front of us, God, we know that you are bigger, you're greater, you're stronger, you're more holy than anything that we could ever face. And so, God, we rest in that. Lord, and we take confidence in you. We rest in you today. God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ that have gathered here. I I thank you that we have a people group that is able to join together, to link arms, and to do this life together. Lord, thank you for providing this church family for us. Lord, I thank you that that we aren't alone. And I thank you that, that you have given us people that we can, we can journey with, that we can share our burdens with, that we can be real with, God. And I pray, Lord, if there's anyone here that is just, just feeling lonely, that's just feeling like the weight is on their shoulders, Lord, I, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray that today, Lord, that they would reach out to someone that's in this room, God. And I pray that we would shoulder each other's burdens, that, Lord, we would come alongside of each other because none of us have it together. We're all weak. We're all broken. We all need a Savior. That's why we're here. None of us have it all together, Lord, and that includes me. But, Lord, we acknowledge that we need you and we need each other. And so, Lord, bind us together. Unify us as your church. God, help us to pray for one another. 
Help us to intercede on behalf of each other. Because, Lord, we need you more and more every single day, Lord. Teach us to walk in step with you. Lord, I pray that following you would not just be a Sunday morning activity, but would be an every single day journey with you and with other believers, God. And Lord, may that not just stop with those that believe and think like us, but may that continue and carry out into our community that is broken, that is tough, that is broken and divided. And Lord, may... May the name of Jesus be the one that heals and restores and brings us together and unifies us, Lord. So God, we do pray for our city. We pray for the other churches in our community. We pray that you would unify us, God. I pray that we would be one body that would uh, be living and active, that you would be breathing new life in and that you would be leading us and calling us out to our workplaces and out to the streets, Lord, out to the broken places, Lord, the dark places, and that you would help us bring your light into those situations, God. Lord, it is messy. It is hard. It is difficult. And it is scary, to be honest, God. And Lord, I pray that those feelings that we have about that that we would learn to rely on you, that we learn to trust in you and know that you are the God who's with us and that goes before us and that is calling us to go out into our community, to shine your light, to, to speak the powerful name of Jesus, to tell this community about who you are and what you can do. And Lord, I truly believe that if we go out and we be the church and Lord, you leading us through your Holy Spirit and, and us boldly trusting in you and sharing about what you've done and inviting people into this beautiful community that we have here, God, I, I believe that things would change around here. Lord, I, I believe it, I see it. I believe that the name of Jesus is powerful and that can stretch across every single divide everything that is going on in our city, all the drugs, all the violence, all the, the hatred, God, the division. Lord, I believe that you are the answer. I do. And I believe that there's others in this church that believe that as well. And Lord, so may you, may you guide us. May you help us to be the people, to be the church that you've always wanted us to be. And may we continue to meet the needs of our community. So, Lord, in this time, Lord, we pray that, um, that you would be at work in our lives. But, Lord, we pray that you would help us uh, to not just be focused on us, but to look out into this world, this world that you gave your life for. Lord, if you love the world, so can I. You died for this world, Lord. You gave it all. And, Lord, you, you're calling us to be a part of that mission and telling others about you, God. We're not in here to, to save the world, but you did. You came to save the world. And so may we point others back to you, God. May we have boldness to do that this week. So God, in this, uh, in this time, would you speak to our hearts? Lord, would you point us back to you? We thank you for your goodness and for your faithfulness. And we pray all this in Christ's name. This morning, it's our privilege to receive some uh, new members into our church church fellowship. And uh, so I'm going to ask at this time, those of you who have been through the Foundations of Faith class and you're ready to take that step of membership, if you'll come right now, um, we're going to invite you to come on up here and uh, right now. All right, they're coming. Let's go stand. All right. We had a really good class. And you want to sit down? That's fine. You guys can sit down. Okay. All right. So Calvin has a little trouble standing, so he's just going to be seated right there on, on front. Uh, <laughs> you, you go with her. Okay. <laughs> We're going to introduce everybody to you in just, just a minute so you kind of know who these, who these folks are. Um, 
But I just want to, I just have a couple questions for you to, um, to begin with this morning. Um, we're so happy to have you formally uniting with our, fel our fellowship here. And the most important thing in the way we become part of the church is to come to know Jesus as our Savior. And so I would ask you, first of all, do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And do you believe that he saves you now? If so, say, I do. I do. All right. Amen. And then we have been through in our class the uh, beliefs of our church and um, the, the way we seek to live as followers of Jesus. So I would ask you, do you support the beliefs of our church and will you live to the best of your ability in the way of Jesus? If so, say, I will. All right, wonderful. Um, it is a, a joy for me to welcome you into the fellowship of our church and uh, we have a membership certificate for you, but let me just introduce these folks to you to you this morning. I, I made a few notes because I don't remember everything. Um, so this is Brenda, and uh, I always call you want to call you Brenda. I'm sorry, <laughs> Robin, Al Robin Garrett, and Oliver Garrett, and so this is mother and son actually, and uh, Oliver's wife Amy is. Uh, working this morning. She's a uh, NICU nurse um, down at Holy Cross, is it Shady Grove? Okay, Shady Grove Hospital. And um, so she's busy taking care of little little babies down there. Um, Robin is a retired school teacher from Montgomery County. And Oliver is a welder. He has his own, he has his own business. They uh, come from the Gaithersburg Church of the Nazarene. They were part of the Gaithersburg Church of the Nazarene, moved out in this area. And um, I don't know, Pastor Ben Spidler was the pastor there, and, you know, he always like, why don't you, when are you going to send us some people? Because we're, <laughs> <laughs> people tend to be moving this, this way. Um, next to Oliver is Mercedes Hernandez. And um, Mercedes, I think, I think it'd be, I'm pretty close to say you're an office manager for a financial planner and uh, investment broker. And she and her husband, Juan, and their three children, we're just been so, uh, such a joy to have them as part of our, our church. And uh, some of you may remember that it was a month or so ago that their daughter, Megan, was baptized, and we rejoice with them um, in that. And, um, well, I, uh, Mercedes is already kind of jumping into our children's ministries and helping out with that. And I should have mentioned that that um, Amy, and I don't want to call you Brenda again, <laughs> Robin, <laughs> Amy and Robin, I don't know why I got that thing in my head, but uh, have been active in uh, coordinating the Embrace Life group. And Brenda has worked with the children there. We've really appreciated their, their work there. That's a, did I say it again? Yeah, I did it again. <laughs> It's a mental block. I don't know. <laughs> okay, Robin. It's like I'm not being very welcoming. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, and then next to them is uh, Nikki and Matthew Mallard, and of course Lucy. And Lucy was dedicated uh, several several weeks ago. Um, she also went through our Foundations of Faith class. So <laughs> um, but uh, Ma Matthew is has a marble countertop business, and uh, Nikki's a stay-at-home mom now, and uh, they've just kind of been helping out where, wherever needed. I know Matthew helped a few of our folks move recently and was just a super big help, but we appreciate the way you've helped out. And then um, next to them is uh, Marlene and Calvin Butt, and interestingly, Mar Marlene and Calvin uh, were neighbors of uh, Connie and Dwayne Brown, and had been a part of their small group for, you know, a, lo a long time. And um, they attended church down in Rockville, and uh, that's getting a little bit too far to drive now. And so it's just been natural for them to go from being involved in uh, their neighbor's small group to being now a part of our church fellowship. And, and it's a real joy to welcome them. They are retired as uh, workers in, again, in the Montgomery County school system. So it's, it's nice to... Uh, welcome you into our, our church membership. So I have a, a membership card for, for each one of you. Let's see. 
problem. So welcome to, uh, to each one of you. Let's just give them a, hand, a round of applause and just, just a word of welcome to our, our church. Okay. All right. Well, you all may be seated. We welcome you. You can be seated. Yeah. Uh, we are going to go ahead and dismiss all of our awesome kiddos and, and their teachers at this point. So if you want to head on back, uh, this is for pre-K through fourth grade. The army is moving. They're on their way. All right, as they're, as they're making their way out, uh, we just want to take just a couple minutes to uh, make us aware of several announcements. Um, Hopefully, as you came in, you got this nice uh, pink sheet um, with things. We also send this out in a, a weekly email. So if you're not getting those and would like to get those, let us know. Um, and so we, we can stay in touch and know what's going on in the life of the church. Um, today, right after, uh, right after our service is over, we invite you to come on out to our, uh, our Sunday school programming. So there's something for all ages. We'd love to have you join us. So that begins officially at 11, 11 a.m. Um, we also have our, our church offering. If you have any tithes or offerings that you'd like to give, uh, two offering um, boxes in the back. And also uh, you can give through our church website and app um, as well if you'd rather do it that way. Uh, we also um, want to invite you, as, uh, as Nora shared, that tonight uh, there's a special gathering among uh, different churches in our, in our community. And so um, each time it, it's, it's grown a little bit. And um, I, I hope that uh, if you're able to, at 6 o'clock tonight, you come right out here. Um, it's going to be literally right in this room, and uh, we're going to just be able to worship the Lord. We got some awesome, awesome uh, songs that we're going to that we're going to just join in together and singing, and and then uh, the most important thing that we can do is just pray and pray together. And so um, we invite you to come on out, and uh, we're going to be praying for our city, and uh, it's going to be going to be a, a powerful, powerful time together. Um, we also uh, want to invite you to our, um, our pastor, Pastor Steve, and Pam's uh, reception. Uh, pastor Steve is semi-retiring and is uh, kind of entering into this new season, but it is felt after 20 years of service here um, and many others uh, in other places uh, that it's, it's time. Uh, it feels like the Lord is leading them to another time. And so we want to be able to celebrate and to thank him and Pam for, for their service. And so... Um, that is going to be on February 11th um, at 5:30. There's going to be a prayer service, and then followed by that, there's going to be dinner and just a reception for them. So some some great times uh, to be able to gather with them to s celebrate and thank them. Um, we do uh, just we know that there's going to be a lot of people coming in, so we really do want to know how many for food and all that. So if you can RSVP uh, no later than actually tomorrow. So if you can get on that. Uh, send an email to our church office. Um, that would be great, and just let us let us know that you're planning on coming. How many you're you're planning on bringing along with you? Um, but that will be just a special special time together. Um, we also, uh, as you're walking in, there's a counter, and on the counter there um, there are two things. There are baby bottles, which I actually forgot. Ashley, can you throw throw that one up? She didn't want to throw it because she didn't think I could catch. That's that's. It. <laughs> um, so we have we have baby bottles that are that are out there, and we have uh, giving statements that are out there. So if you gave it all um, throughout this last year, please grab one of those. Um, and we also encourage you to grab one of these baby bottles while you're at it. So this is for the uh, Hagerstown Area Pregnancy Center, and uh, it is uh, just an opportunity to give and to to resource and to be able to support. Uh, the work um, there with uh, with women and with uh, with uh, babies being born. So it's a, there's a big um, big big thing down there that uh, big ministry and God is really uh, really using that and working um, working in that ministry and all those that serve there. Um, so so grab a bottle 
And what you do with it, you can either you can write a check, you can throw it in there, or if you got loose change around at the house and you, you want to just do it, it's kind of fun. As, as you find things, you can just put it in there, fill it up, bring it back, and we'll make sure that it all goes uh, to the pregnancy center. Um, we also have one other, um, one other thing about uh, a way to serve, and that's through Ruth Ann Monroe. They're looking for kids' pants, pant sizes. Um, so if you want to go out to the store and grab some, or if you got some that are, that are new, um, good condition, if you want to bring those in, um, we're collecting those, and so uh, that would be a great thing. I'm also going to invite, I think Carol Bryan is going to come now, and she's got um, several announcements that she wants to do, but she's our, our missions um, coordinator here, and uh, we're, we're just thrilled to have, to have her, and so come on up and share. You got your hands full. And you got something on your on your head. I, tell, I got something on my head. All right, tell us about that. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> I don't wear hats. <laughs> I just wear a few. <laughs> and um, I know that in your bulletin this week you got a message that stated about the coldest night of the year. If you see my hat, it says the coldest night of the year. This is a fundraiser that Reach is doing this year. It is something new to the United States. It is uh, originally started in Canada, very big uh, in Canada, and is just working its way down into the United States, and we heard about it. And uh, so REACH has signed up, and uh, what they uh, do, it is for the ho uh, a homeless group, and um, goodness knows we know that REACH works with the homeless. And so they were able to work through this company uh, to uh, be able to set this up. It's a walk. It will be the 25th of February. It is everyone friendly, family friendly. We're not running, we're walking. And uh, we're only gonna walk around the perimeter of the HCC. So you don't have very far to walk and really you don't have to walk. Uh, but anyway, what we are doing, we have signed our church up as to be one of the teams that will be walking. So if you go to C, oldest night of the year, cnoy.com, and you hit find a location, you will start to type in Hagerstown. It will pop up Hagerstown Reach. Click on that, scroll down, and you'll find Nazarene Church. We're about 15 down. Go across, and there's a little arrow and you can decide whether you want to walk with us and join us walking or whether you want to just donate. Now, I have some walkers that tell me they will sign up and they will be hitting you up for donations to help them. <laughs> Didn't you tell me you'd sign up? I'm signing up? I thought you'd sign up. I had some others, but I don't have them down in the computer yet, so I can't give out names. But anyway. If you want to sponsor Kevin, you can sponsor Kevin. If you want to sponsor me, um, and once I find out who else is walking, I'll let you know who else there is, or they can uh, start asking for donations too. But on that page, you can either join the team, which uh, you have to fill out yourself. I cannot fill that out for you, because it's your own personal information. Or you can just donate, and you can donate uh, to the church. Uh, Reach has set a goal of $20,000, and I set us a goal of $2,000. I thought we should be able to reach $2,000. So if uh, you're interested, you can go to that website. You can learn more about it, but uh, we will be giving you more information uh, as it becomes available to us. But start thinking about, do I want to walk? If I want to walk, who am I going to hit up for donations? And the more donations you get, the better off. Now, you see my little hat here. If, as an adult, you raise $150, they will send you one. As a, I believe it's 17 and below, I believe is the cutoff. If you raise $75, you will get one. Now, no one gets mine. It's paid for, <laughs> or it will be paid for. <laughs> so anyway, Please join us either by walking or by donating. As you all know, everybody knows about REACH in this church. If you don't, somebody hasn't been paying attention <laughs> because we spend a lot of time at REACH. And uh, it's a very worthwhile cause, uh, 
very worthwhile organization, do great things. Second thing, Truth to the Nazarene does crisis care kits. They uh, do this all over. The, we take ours to Fawn Grove, uh, to our, uh, out, our point of uh, distribution. And uh, these go anywhere in the world that is in having a disaster, a crisis of any kind, and they ask for them. These are shipped out in humongous containers and go out. It takes six care kits to fill a banana box. If you ever see that they're showing a disaster area and you see a bunch of banana boxes, you can guarantee the Nazarene Church is there because that's what we ship in. We ship in banana boxes. 20 bucks, I'll shop for you, or you can fill your own bag. You can pick them up at the back. We will be taking them probably through, November, uh, through uh, February. And I think I have one more. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Is it okay? Okay. We are a giving, giving church. And, you know, I love it. And we are a very participating church. And you know what? This is something for us. This is a fellowship for us to get to know each other better. We are reviving the chili cook-off. Yay! It will be Saturday night. Bring your chili. Oh. I saw that person that said they don't eat chili. Well, we got a pot of beef stew coming, too. So if that still doesn't interest you, bring your cornbread or bring your dessert and come and join us. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to find out who makes the best chili, maybe. <laughs> there will be prizes for chili in different categories, and there will even be prizes for the youth and the um, kids if they decide to join us and make their own chili. So we are looking forward to 5.30 Saturday night, seeing you all here for chili. And boy, will we have a good service next Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Thanks, Carol. All right. Well, I'm going to invite uh, Steve Gray. Steve Gray can come on up, and he is going to, uh, to read from the word of the Lord for us this morning, and then Pastor Steve will come up and, and give us a message. So, Steve, it's yours. Thank you for your prayer this morning, Pastor Kevin. I'm sure you received affirmation that there are a lot of believers in this church. I heard a lot of amens. And Steve, your service bulletin, everybody said amen and praise the Lord. So must have been good music this morning. So we're going to be looking in God's Word this morning, actually in two Gospels. We're going to look at the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 through 34. And then we're also going to look at the message from Luke, chapter 12, 13 through 21. Those of you who can stand, please stand, join with me. I will warn you in advance, it's rather lengthy, but it's got a lot of words for us this morning to match the pastor's message for us. Again, Matthew 5, I'm sorry, 6, 19 through 34. Do not store up yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Just a little add-in with this. None of that's going to be in heaven. Praise God. We're not going to have all that, all that trouble and all those things. For where your heart, I'm sorry, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worship, I'm sorry, do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. 
They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more than more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about the clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that none, even Solomon, in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will not much more than clothe you, you of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. If we could go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12. And we'll begin at verse 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard against all all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger bigger ones, and there I'll store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then, who will you get where you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Pastor Steve. All right, you may be seated. So in today's passage, we uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, and maybe some of you are reading through through the, this Gospel, as I suggested last week, we get to chapter 5, chapters 5 through 7, and we find this beautiful collection of Jesus' teaching called the Sermon on the Mount. Um, sometimes we it's referred to as kind of the constitution of Jesus' kingdom. We have our constitution in the United States, and so we treasure it as a document that guides our country. Well, this, these, these chapters represent the constitution of Jesus' kingdom. Spell, it spells out the priorities of our lifestyle and, and how we seek to live as citizens of Jesus' kingdom. So today's scripture is a call for us as followers of Jesus to live as generous people in a world that's often filled with a whole bunch of greed. Um, this week, I... Uh, gave a report to a gathering of pastors of, across our district, and uh, it was my report on, on what happened in our congregation for 2022. And one of the key themes in my report was the, the theme of generosity. And it's interesting that already this theme has come through this morning. And so I, I shared with with uh, the, these other pastors and our district leaders that uh, this past year, we've been a part of showering single young moms, expectant mothers, uh, providing for their newborn babies, everything they'll need once they give birth to these babies. And 
We've sent over 200 shoe boxes to children around the world at Christmas time and provided 50 children in our partner schools with Christmas presents. You remember all those, those presents that just filled up the, the uh, foyer out there and, and our offering at Christmas time to, to reach with the donor match, it came to like $4,800 um, that you gave. Um, and um, many of you so faithful in giving for missions and giving your tithes and your offerings. Um, so it was my privilege just to report, and I just want to say, commend you and say thank you for being such a generous, generous people. Um, and you did this at a time when inflation is at all-time high, right? And it's cutting into our budget, but yet that hasn't stopped you from being uh, a generous people. Um, I mean, can you believe the price of eggs? You know, I, there are some things going on, on on social media when you want to take your wife or girlfriend to someplace expensive. Well, go ahead and write that picture. You get that picture up there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fancy dinner, someplace expensive. <laughs> wow. And there was an idea that, that came out, um, you know, part of the reason that eggs are so expensive is like the bird flu, right? So there was an idea on how maybe we could do something about the cost of eggs. Go to that next one. Yeah. Stop the spread of masks on all the chickens. Maybe that'll help. I don't know. <laughs> all right. No extra charge for those, <laughs> those, those pictures. Um, but today we want to talk about the, some biblical principles for gener generosity. And I just want to run, warn you right up front that, that that means that we're going to talk about the M, M word. Uh, you know what the M word is, money. And I know somebody, sometimes we get a little bit nervous and fidgety when the preacher, and I tell you what, the preacher gets a little bit nervous too when we talk about money. I heard about family. They were uh, driving they were driving home from church, and the dad seemed like every, time, every Sunday after church, he, he just started complaining, and he complained about how the service went late, and um, that the preacher was boring and too long-winded, and the music was too loud, and the kids in the service were disruptive, and they needed to turn up the heat, and he was just going down this whole, whole, whole list, and their little boy was in the back seat. He was listening as, dad, as his dad complained about the service, and on and on and on. Well, the boy also had been play, paying close attention during the, the uh, service, and he noticed that when they passed the offering, um, he saw the guy in front of him put $50 in the offering, and the lady next to him put a $100 bill in the offering, and he saw his dad put in a $1 bill in the offering. Finally, Dad quit complaining and about all the things that were wrong with the service, and the boy said, hey, Dad, it really wasn't a bad show for a dollar. <laughs> all right, well, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Out of the mouths of children. Well, so I want to talk this morning about, um, like, two reasons, first of all, why the church should talk about money. Um, and I, and I want to, one, one is that Jesus talked a lot about money because he wanted to set people free. Um, money can be a source of great bondage in people's lives. Um, so Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus was laying out why he had come into the world. And this was kind of his, the mission statement that he laid out. He said, He's in his hometown, and he opens the scroll of Isaiah, and these, these words are from the scroll of Isaiah. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. And he sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And I wanted to focus a little bit on to set the oppressed free. Uh, because today in America, the, the lives of millions of people are in bondage to money. Did you know that, that the average American um, in 2021 had about $5,500 in credit card debt? And, and I've been there. I, I, I've been in a place where I've had credit card debt, and, and it's not a good feeling. 
Did you know that what, the leading cause of divorce in America is o- arguments over finances? How, what are we going to spend? How are we going to make ends meet? It, it tears, tears apart couples. Um, maybe this morning you're, you're in that category, feeling some bondage when it comes to finances. Well, Jesus came to set people free from bondage. That's the central to his mission. The second thing is that we talk about money because Jesus talked. Actually, did you know Jesus talked about money more than any other topic? Did you realize that? Throughout the Bible, there are about 500 verses that have to do with prayer, but there are over 2,000 verses in the Bible that have to do with money. In the Bible, there are 36, 38 parables of Jesus, and 16 of them have to do with money. In fact, one in every 10 verses in the New Testament in some way, reflect on the topic of money. So, if, um, if, if money is so prominent throughout the, the Bible, it's important that we talk about it because we all need it, right? It's, this is where we live. So, I want to talk today about um, some principles of generosity, some principles of generosity. And in the first one that I think is important for us to, it's kind of foundational for everything else that we build on, um, Jesus' principles of generosity, number one, everything we have is God's. Everything we have comes from God. And the, bio, the Bible verse there, actually, let's, let's read that together. If you can see it, okay, the print's a little bit smaller, but I think you can see it okay. Let, let's read that one together. It says, every good and perfect gift. Read it with me. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Okay. So, an important message there. Every good, every perfect gift that we have comes to us from above, from the heavenly Father. Psalm 24, 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Well, you might say, well, I work hard for what I have. But who gave you the mind to do your job, to get your education, to do your work? You build things, maybe you fix things for a living. Well, who gave you the dexterity, the strength to swing that hammer or to crank that wrench or turn those pliers? Maybe you're in sales. Well, what's your product made of? Is it, is it wood or paper? Well, who, who made the trees? Who set the conditions in place, the sun, the rain, the soil, to grow the food that you, so that you can feed your family? Every good and perfect gift is from above. Maybe you take care of your, chil- your children. Maybe your primary task is raising children. Well, who gives the gift of life? You don't have anything that God didn't give you. Now, in the parable that Steve read for us, Jesus is is there, and there's this guy who yells from the back of the crowd, as I imagine it. Um, he's Jesus is a prominent rabbi, and he, and he says, "Rabbi, make my brother share the inheritance with me." And in response, Jesus, he's not going to do that. He's not going to be a judge, but he tells a story about a guy that's rich, and they had a bumper crop, or, you know, maybe more in, in, in modern, our, our setting, you know, you got a huge bonus or a major unexpected raise, and so this guy decides in agricultural setting, he's going to build bigger and bigger barns to store his crops, and there's nothing wrong with saving for the future, planning for our children to go to college or for retirement. That, that's good. That's th- things that we should do. But the problem with the rich guy in the parable that he, was that he was only thinking about his own personal comfort. And so Luke 12, 17, let me just, I'll just read this for you. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I, listen to all the personal pronoun, first person pronouns. I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and I will store my surplus grain 
and I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. For this guy, it's all about me. My retirement. What I've stored up. No thought for sharing his wealth, helping to provide for others, being a part of God's work in the world. Well, you say, Jesus' story is about a rich guy, but I'm not rich. I can't afford to be generous. Well, let me give you like, this is point number two for us this morning. I'll say it this way, you are loaded. You're like, what? Um, I've learned a few things about American spending patterns. Um, do you know Americans spend $10 million a day on potato chips? $630 million a day on golf balls? <laughs> um, maybe you're here, you're a college student. You know, college students don't have any money, Right? Well, the average American college student actually has $287 a month in discretionary spending and spends $11 billion a year on snacks, $3 billion a year on music downloads, and $5.5 million, I mean billion dollars, I say, these are all billions, billion dollars on alcohol, more than tea, coffee, books combined. The average income in the United States is $40,000 a year, some of you are above that. Some of you are below that. Um, but if you make 40000 the average, 96.8% of the world makes less than you do. In fact, if you have a roof over your head, enough clothes to wear, food to eat, you're better off than 75% of the people of the world. Like you're in the top 25%. So comparatively speaking, we got it pretty good. If you've traveled internationally and or seen pictures that we brought back from mission trips and shacks that people live in, we're loaded. All right. A third point when we're thinking about generosity is you can't outgive God. You can't outgive God. Matthew 6. 33, one of the passages, again, that Steve read for us this morning, lays out this principle for us. And again, I'd like us all to read this one, this one together as well. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. We seek him first. We put him first in our lives. And the promise is his provision will kick in. He will take care of us. Here's another way that it's put in scriptures, Malachi 3.10. And this brings in the, the uh, issue of, of tithing. And I'd like us to read this one as well. Read it with me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Now, this verse doesn't mean the tithe means giving 10%. Very, very simple. It doesn't mean that if you give 10% that God's going to make you rich. But if you give 10%, the promise is that our lives will be blessed. Do you know that there's a lot greater blessings in life than just having money? A loving family would be one of those things. That in putting God first in every area of our lives, including our finances, that God's blessing then is set free to flow into our lives. It's actually, when you think of it, it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> And I would say, this is something that I've done all my life. I used to mow lawns when I was a teenager. And, and I learned about this. And so if I got $10 to mow a lawn, that's about what you got back then, I'd kick in my one buck in the offering. I was as faithful as I could be as a teen, teenager. 
might have missed some. But um, God gives us everything. And he, and he says, we get to keep the 90%, but then he asks us to live against the flow of greed in our culture and be generous and giving. In Malachi 3, it talks here about bringing, bringing it into the storehouse or into my house. And, and this was a place in the temple where they stored. It was an agricultural society. And so they, they had grain and would be flowing with grain and agricultural produce. And this is the storehouse. And these resources were, were then used to help the poor and run the worship life and ministries in the temple. So in his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus asked us to, to look at nature. I, I imagine him there with his disciples on the Sea of Galilee on a hillside. And there's like a flock of birds that go up, goes up in the air. Actually, in the Gospel of Luke, it says they're ravens. Uh, any raven fans are like, oh, good, right there, right there in the Bible. But probably... Um, the reason he used ravens was because they were unclean birds. You would never. <laughs> you would never eat a raven like you might eat a dove. Um, you would never sacrifice a, a raven. Um, so Jesus' point was, well, God even takes care of the unclean thing. And he provides for their well-being and makes sure that they're fed. And even that which is unclean, God takes care of. How much more will he take care of you and provide food for you? And Jesus was probably, as a master teacher, he was probably out there on the hillside. And there, over there, there was a field of lilies. And he said, you know, look at the lilies of the field. Look how beautiful they are. God clothes, clothes the lilies of the field. How much more he's going to make sure you have. Enough, enough clothes. Sorry, you Ravens fans. I, <laughs> um, Jesus, God has promised to take care of us. Jesus is the father of your finances. You don't have to worry about the future when you're seeking Jesus first. You can live without crippling anxiety. This is setting the oppressed free. Today, instead of trusting, uh, you can trust in the gracious provision of your heavenly Father who loves you. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This promise is made in the context of a requirement that we seek his kingdom first. God wants us to enjoy the stuff we have, to have nice things, to go fun places. That's not wrong. To spend our money wisely in a way that honors him. So one of the principles of good financial security is to be generous with the first 10%, to save 10% for the future, and then live off the 80%. And then God promises to provide for your needs. I thought I'd tell you just a little, get that next picture up here of these two guys. Um, so the guy in the blue coat, that's my grandson. And uh, next to him is my son-in-law. My grandson's name is Mitch. And uh, my, my uh, son-in-law is Sadrach. And this is a picture that was taken just uh, over Christmas when we were up there in the Boston area visiting. I think that's Boston Harbor in the, in the background. Um, my son-in-law, Sadrach, is Haitian. His first wife uh, died suddenly when he was a pastor in Haiti, and Mitch was just one year old. So he was left to raise a one-year-old little boy uh, when his wife died suddenly of a heart complication that could have been taken care of had they lived in the U.S. Um, obviously, he later, I have time to tell you the story of how he married uh, my daughter, but I, but I really wanted to tell you the, the story comes from him, my son-in-law, growing up in Haiti. Um, his mother, Virginie, had three children, and um, her husband left her. 
And so she was left as a single mom, three children, in a, a very poor country, abandoned by her husband. She was a prayer warrior, and Sadrach says, man, when the church was open, we had to be there. And we, we had to sneak up on, off on Sundays to play soccer, and then we had to go to church in the evening and couldn't keep playing soccer. Um, but um, she worked in a, his mother worked in a factory in the capital of Port-au-Prince in deplorable conditions, barely had enough to feed her children. My son-in-law, when he was in high school, he said, if we knew we had a test, exam, it was an exam day, and we would eat salt because it would take away the hunger pangs and cramps in our stomachs. And therefore, we, then we could concentrate on the schoolwork and the exams that we had to take, take, in, take in, take that day. Now, he's now working on his PhD in, in, in Boston at Boston College. I tell you that story to tell us, to tell you that, you know, our world is broken. And there are faithful Christian people who are struggling to feed their children and make, make ends meet. Now, it was our church missions program in, Hed in Haiti that educated my son-in-law in being a pastor. We sponsor a seminary there. So he learned to be a pastor and was given the tools to then, for that then to become his livelihood. And that was a stepping stone toward a better future. But you really can't outgive God. And, well, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about, about that principle. Let me go on to principle number four, and we'll kind of come, I'd like to come back to thinking about Sadrach. Um, so your heart is hitched to your treasure is another principle. Your heart is hitched to your treasure. Um, the scriptures say, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure goes, your heart follows. When you invest in God's work, your heart is in tune with His heart. And so God, God has a heart for hungry children of our world. Um, one year I, I met an 18-year-old girl at Reach who's homeless. God's heart breaks over that. I met a guy who who works 13 hours a day sorting out recycled trash, and he's finally saved up enough money to get his own apartment. God's heart breaks over millions of refugees that have had to flee their homes and now live in overcrowded camps. Now, hold on to that. And there was a study that was conducted by a Christian organization in Champaign, Illinois, a few years back, and they asked the question, what would happen if every Christian in America started tithing? Tithing is the, the giving God the first 10%. What would happen with, with that? What if Christian teens started giving 10% of their babysitting or lawn mowing money and, uh, to God's work in the church? What if every adult tithed? The study found that if that happened, there would be an, an additional $86 billion that would be available to churches. And if these funds then were channeled into clean water and sanitation and infant and maternal care and basic education and immunizations and long-term development issues, that this amount of money would meet the essential human needs around the world and poverty conditions that kill and render so many children and adults hopeless could be overturned. In fact, they concluded that we could get rid of poverty and needless disease if every Christian in America would tithe. So we shouldn't be surprised that God's plan all along has been that His church, people like you and me, would live generously. And that's God's plan for bringing His kingdom into the world. Okay, and then here's the last, here's the last one of five this morning, principles of generosity. You can invest in eternity. So Luke chapter 12 uh, verse 20, God said in the parable, the man who built the big barns for himself, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you prepared for yourself? This is how it will be for whoever stores up things for themselves but isn't rich toward God. I want to be rich toward God, don't you? I want, to, I want my life to count for God's work. 
Do you know that everything you have is becoming less shiny? Your computer's growing obsolete. I guess there are some things that appreciate in value. That's probably true. Some things do that. But your car is getting rust spots in it. Siding on your house is fading. What are we up to, like, iPhone 13 Pro Max and Galaxy Z flip, flip phone? Flip phone? That's hard, kind of hard to say. I think that's where we are right now. Well, pretty soon they're going to come out with the Galaxy 14, or the iPhone 14. I don't know what's after the Galaxy Z. They're already at the end of the alphabet. I, I don't know. But anyway, newer, faster, more features, better camera, all that stuff. When John Rockefeller was dying, he was the wealthiest man in America at that time. Someone asked him, how much did you leave? And he said, all of it. Left all of it. Didn't leave all of it. You can't take it with you. So Jesus says, invest it wisely during the short time that God gives us on this planet. Everything is wearing out. Can you remember what you got for Christmas three years ago? I sure can't. And when you're living generously, you're investing things in things eternal, and you're set free from the bondage of money. When, when you invest in God's work, you're building in the spirit, into the spiritual lives of children and teens. You're teaching and mentoring the, them to put Jesus first in their lives. You're helping to relieve the suffering of our world. All right, so real quick, this is kind of the wrap-up this morning. God's three Ps, the three Ps of God's financial plan, okay? So this is real, real practical. So your first priority, you ask yourself, is this my first priority? Seeking God's kingdom. Right? So priority, first P. Plan. Do you have a budget? It's kind of first of the year thing. It's a good time to kind of get some of this on track. So you plan. You tell your money where it's going to go. You don't ask where did it all go. You have a budget. You have a plan. So you know. You know where it's going. That means you got to keep track of where it goes, right? That's the hardest thing. It's one thing to put it on paper. It's another thing to here's what we actually spent. And then the final P is percentage. All of what you have is a gift from God. And a great goal for you to set is to live off the 80% and save 10% and then give 10%. And maybe you can't muster enough, up enough faith. and Maybe there are circumstances in your life right now that it's going to take some time for you to deal with. Well, what percent can you give? And then maybe add a little bit to it as an act of faith stretching your faith as you move toward that 10% goal. If you do this, God's blessing and peace will flow into your life. It's his promise to us, and you'll be set free. It's the freedom of generosity. There's freedom in living this way. It's up to God because I'm living according to his plan, and he does truly want us to be a generous person. And again, I just commend you. It's, been, it's a privilege to lead a group of people who are so generous in giving for God's work in the world. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Would you stand with me, please? Oh God, we thank you so much. For blessing our lives so much. It's not always the financial blessing. In fact, that's never the main thing. There are people who are filthy rich who are miserable. But we pray that you would help us, teenagers, children here today, to put you first in everything. All that we have is a gift. The next breath that we take, it's your gift of life. crops that feed us, the home that keeps us warm, 
the jobs, to give us income, the strength to earn. But we just pause and say thank you, God, for blessing us so richly. Father, we pray that you give us hearts that are generous. And today, God, we're in all different situations in life. For some here today, there have been unexpected financial setbacks. And they're recovering. Lord, I pray that you'd help them to know what does it mean to exercise faith in this important area of life. Lord, show us how to apply this teaching to our specific circumstances. Give us hearts filled with generosity. May we cut against the me first priority of greed in our culture and live out the teachings of Jesus knowing that where our treasure is, there our hearts will be also. God, we pray that you give us wisdom and direction. We're still kind of at the beginning of the year. As we think about our budgets and finances, Lord, we want to honor you in every area of our lives. Show us, Lord, how to do that. We thank you, Lord, that you're a God who loves us. And you're a God who cares for us. And because of that, we are so richly blessed. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together.
right. Well, I do want to encourage you, if you're available this evening, we have a prayer service at 6 o'clock. We're joining with other churches to pray for our city, um, for our churches, and um, it'll be a, about an hour that we'll spend together in prayer this evening. Let's pray as we go. Lord, thank you that you are a God who loves us. That's our confidence. Uh, that is our hope. That in Jesus, you've come to be our Savior and our friend. That you are a Father who cares deeply for us. And Lord, we pray that you, by your, your wisdom and strength, would help us to live this out as we seek to be generous and loving people in this world that we live in. Go with us and may we go in the power of our risen Christ and the Holy Spirit. May he fill us and give us strength for each day. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.